Well hello again, it's Cliff here from Down Under. Well, TTS has its advantages as well, of course. But while it has the disadvantage of not being as rigid and secure as BT30, it has the advantage that it's very versatile. It's based on the R8 system, and you can get R8 collets and hold large diameter cutters straight into the spindle. For, ex for example, this 5.8 shank reflex cutter. One of the new owners of a Hallmark ITTP sent me a nice little holder that he 3D printed um, and apparently online there's various files of uh, holders for the ITTP if you have a 3D printing setup. It's a good idea to have a holder like this um, that keeps the probe out of reach of coolant and chips and keeps it in this orientation in its orientation of use. The reason for that is that inside these Hallmark ITTP probes there's electrical gel on the contacts. The contacts are immersed in uh, little reservoirs of electrical fluid in the form of a gel and if you lay the probes down or store them up the other way the, the gel will gradually migrate out of those reservoirs and it won't be as good. It's better to have the reservoirs full of the gel protecting the contacts so that you get long-term reliability. Well I'll just shift it over here for a minute so you can better see it. So it's like a little holster that protects the probe, holds it in place and keeps it in a convenient place. Thanks for that Nick. That's better. That wood screw looked bad. Of course you don't have to have an elaborate holder like that. There's nothing wrong with a wooden block um, that can be mounted somewhere convenient on a shelf or in your uh, mechanics cabinet to keep it completely out of harm's way. You don't need to be constrained with the placement of clamps constrained by the T-slots. If there's no T-slot underneath where you want the clamp to be, then you can clamp the clamp. You can shift over to where there is a T-slot and clamp down on your clamp. In this situation here, there's no T-slot in the ideal place, so you can stagger the positioning using a second clamp. Obviously, parallels are really important, as well as adjustable parallels. Fixed parallels are important. It's good to have a good range of parallels and one, two, three blocks and that type of thing. All useful stuff. And sometimes you need big parallels as well. I'm sure most of you will know how easy it is to make a mistake with your CAD, your CAM, your setup um, and not realize it and wreck your first part. But if you're doing tool making work, for example in this job I'm modifying two existing cores on a mold worth scores of thousands of dollars and I really can't afford to make a mistake. You know, you just can never make a mistake in tool making. It's absolutely fatal. 
And so I don't even like to think about the chances of it. So you've got to think of ways to double check absolutely everything so that the first part is perfect. I'm matching in a, to an existing contour and cutting an extension curve out and matching angles and radii and um, it would be very easy to get this wrong. So there's several things you can do to check that that won't happen. Now one of the things you can do is have a careful look, uh, simulate in the CAD CAM, but even when you're on the controller, have a careful look for any strange lines. Lines that are uh, showing the cutter going into the work is a well worth uh, a, a warning signs, obviously. Um, you can run the program above the part, set it up, you know, in this case, I'm setting it up 30 millimeters and running the program slowly with the um, maximum velocity slider down and moving it round to check that it's in the right place and every now and again pausing the program and dropping the tool down to the height and just checking that the tool will be in the right place. This is a double check to find any gremlins or mistakes you might have made before they wreck the job. Okay, let's just show a bit of that in action so you know exactly what I mean. So we're up about 30 millimeters uh, shifted in the Z and we're going to start the cycle. And then we're going to Stop it somewhere, say there, feed hold, stop, and then bring it down. And I'll get around the back and you or use a mirror and just check that there's nothing fundamentally wrong with the way it's set up or that bit of NC code. You've probably noticed I'm running very slow feed rates and not worrying about cycle time because of this low volume work, tool making work and uh, prototyping work, um, the cycle time is not, is not important. What is important is that you don't make any mistakes and um, particularly when you're modifying existing valuable tools, um, it doesn't matter what the cycle time is, what matters is that you never make a mistake and so slow feed rates give you more time to react and uh, hit the pause button uh, and have a chance to sort of keep ahead of what's happening. I might now put in some earlier clips of videos uh, that some of you may have missed uh, covering other aspects of work holding. I'm just setting up to machine the core now and because of the rails on this vise, I need to set the part off center in the vise like that. And it just reminded me, I quite often see videos of people holding their part off center in the vise. And I wonder whether everybody's aware that it's a very precarious way to hold it if you don't use a support spacer. If you grip something like that in the vise, the jaw's free to float, um, even on a precision vise. And the, 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 the more tight you do it up the less secure it's held in some ways let me let me demonstrate if I'm not blocking the camera here okay so it's nipped up on that feeler gauge there now if I do it up really tight it comes free and that's because the whole jaw is racking around under tension and is effectively gripping it like that with a big gap and just on the edge which is very unstable and is likely to flick out under heavy machining you can see that really clearly if I tighten up slowly on the part and see it come into contact there. Now if I carry on, you'll see the jaw skew round. Watch the dial indicator. See how far that's skewed round? So you've got a gap there. You might not see it, but you're only get clamping on that inside edge and the part is very unstable. So what you need to do, or well, one really quick way to fix it, is to set a mic on the thickness of your part and slip an expanding parallel into the mic so that you've got an, an effectively another part the same thickness 
and slip that on the other side of the vise like that. Just trying to demonstrate it quickly here. Now when you lock it up, it's pulling, the jaw is pulling in parallel and gripping the part uh, evenly across that face. And you can do it up firmly and you're held much more securely um, and accurately in position. You might think that if you've got a precision vise, the accuracy of the uh, vise slideway will hold the jaw square even when the clamping is off center. But in reality that doesn't happen. Even on a high precision vise, there has to be some clearance and then also you get flex and compression. Um, and the load's very high off center and it will move a few thou even on a high precision vise and you will only get a grip on that inside edge. Of course I wouldn't use these uh, adjustable parallels for heavy duty uh, vice jobs you know where, where you're really clamping tight or a uh, um, repetitive long-term job because it would eventually bruise and damage the uh, adjustable parallel. It's not so bad if it's a cheap set like this set but I certainly wouldn't use my Starrett adjustable parallels. I think of the of those more like adjustable slip gauges um, and, and you would eventually damage them. So if you're doing heavy duty work you better to use a um, a couple of uh, joiner nuts from your clamp set with a, with a small stud or a, a, a piece of a screw um, and, and the smaller nuts uh, to adjust them out to make up the spacer um, on the other side of the vise and if your part's really small you can block the uh, moving jaw black back with a, a packer block such as that so that you can fit in your spacer uh, nut and stud. Three jaw chucks with reverse jaws are a great way to hold small disc shaped parts. You can have little packer, packer parallels, probably three is a good number, to hold the part up the right height and you can use one of those parallels um, as a location point so that you can screw it down and have a fixed dowel hole that locates the part in the rotary orientation that you want. Each time you just slip in a little pin, in this case just a drill, so that when you tighten it up the part's in its correct rotary orientation. Here we have the part in position located with this pin tightened up and then we can remove the pin. I think I've mentioned it in another video, um, production tips and tricks, um, how useful three-jaw chucks, especially reverse three-jaw chucks, are for holding disc-shaped parts um, because it references repeatably anyway accurately on the X, Y and Z. Um, and Having two jobs set up at once obviously saves you uh, a lot of tool change time and a lot of part change time. Um, and I think I've got another video mentioning how you can uh, produce through subroutines um, different work offset positions or uh, there was different rotary offset positions in that case of that video. But you can either use subroutines or um, you can use just the old copy paste method. So you set it up for one part um, and get the get the, the code edited and, and fine-tuned for one part um, and then set up then then for example copy and paste or use subroutines um, if you copy paste just copy and paste the section of code for each tool change uh, so that you've got two lots of uh, code for each tool change and then just manually edit um, the G say the second position which might be G55 um, on the second piece of code for each tool change and that way it'll run backwards and forwards between the two work offsets and run for uh, twice as long automatically and free you up to get underway on some other project. Alright well thanks for watching that I hope your coffee lasted to the end. <laughs>